heads up, have a quick look. Now, the reason why I've got it on an iPad is because the colours are much more saturated, much more vibrant, and easier to look at when I'm painting. The pictures that you printed out will come out a little bit more subdued, okay? They're going to be a little bit darker and less saturated and less vibrant. So if you've got an iPad or a computer or some sort of digital screen as well as your printed image in front of you, that would be a good way to paint your pictures because then you'll get a little bit more vibrant and plus you can also obviously get your fingers and go into details, okay? So iPads are awesome in regards to look at your resources. So I've done my black and I got blue, I got a touch of red and I did it until I got the colour I wanted, okay? So if you add your blue to your red, you're going to get a very red colour and it's not going to be that good unless you're starting to look at browns. Okay, so I'm going to move through my painting and I'm going to start looking at some more details now on what I'm going to do. So the next colour I'm looking at here with this particular image is there's a lot of brown. So I will want it to be darker than that brown there. So I'm actually this time going to add a bit of blue to the red and a touch of yellow because blue, red and yellow make brown. Did everybody know that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so now I'm go going to get a very dark brown. brown. I'm going to use this paintbrush, which is not my detail brush, but I just mixed up with my detail brush. And I'm going to grab this brush and I'm going to start getting all my brown parts. So I want you to have a look at your painting. And um, be um, so I just continue to add red to the blue until I've got it the colour I like. So Too much red will make it a very um, purple colour, and you don't want that. Mine's more grey than it is red. How much Ooh. yellow did you put in it? Um, quite a bit. Yeah, that's why. Ah. So you get your blue, you add your reds, and then you put a tinsy wincy bit of yellow in it if you need it. Ah, tinsy probably. Only if you need it, okay? Ah. So I look like a black. Now I add a little bit of yellow to mine to make it more browny because now I'm up to the stage where I'm starting to um, get some of these darker browns in. So I'm picking out all these brown patches now and what I want to do is I want to have the background colour I'm not getting any detail in. For example, if there's an area here where there's a sculpture that is light brown, I'll just make the whole thing light brown with no details. What I'm talking about now on the video is I'm just picking out colours and it's just going to be one flat colour. I'm not going to put any details in, so you've got to avoid starting to put details in. So with this colour here, it will almost be an orangey-yellow colour and it won't be till later that I'll start getting the tones in. Okay, now I'm going back to the dark again, and I'm starting to put some patterns in. So I'm looking at the pattern on side in this material here, and I'm trying to get all the lines coming through, making sure that I follow the same pattern here so that it follows the folds of the material. Now, boys, I had a really interesting conversation with Dylan because Dylan um, is seeing different colours in the darker spectrum and he's trying to separate each dark colour, that's probably the wrong way to go around. Probably the better thing to do is just block it out. So hit the background, there were lots of other things in this little corner, but I blocked out the whole lot because I'll come back and I'll add some other tones into that later. Does that make sense to you? You see that there's some darkness behind it, you just do that one flat colour because you can come back and put colours over the top and that's why painting is so good. Okay, you can see now that I'm starting to look at details. I've got my paintbrush, but I'm still just sticking to the black. Now, I'll probably come back and paint over this again, and I might need to retouch, but at least I'm starting to get all that detail in there now with the blacks.
So at the moment, I'm starting to look at this picture and, you know, there's, there's quite a few details here, okay? So if you have a look at that, I know it's a little bit fuzzy and the camera's probably going to have a little bit of problems with it, but you'll see that um, there is a picture or there's, there's these bottles here and they've got lots of details, but instead of putting every detail in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base colour down. Now, with these labels, I'm going to make sure that nobody can tell that they're actually bottles of um, alcohol. I'm going to just make sure that they're just a generic type of bottle. So you can see that just colour there. Pop a little bit of orange because there's a bit of orange there. And I'm just going to flick in some colour here. Okay, so you can see that that's just basic colour there, no details. I'm not putting details in, boys, I'm just blocking in colour. Okay, now I'm going to the bottle top. And I'm going to make a yellowy orangey colour, which is this colour here. Same thing, just blocking in, blocking in, maybe even a bit more orange in there. Okay, blocking that colour just here. No real details, just blocking in colour. This colour here, I would say it's like a, um, a yellowy sort of colour, yellowy brown. I've left some of the brown onto the, the brush and the yellow. Now you could argue that that's a lot lighter. I could probably put a little bit of uh, white, yet maybe a little bit of white in there. A basic colour. Later, I'm going to put some of these lovely flecks of paint through, okay? These things look like brush strokes. But I'm just going to block it in, basic colour. Doesn't have to be perfect colour because I actually like these paint brush strokes coming through in the colour itself. Okay. I'm um, just um, blocking in some of these lighter colours in now. I've got a lot of dark, so now I'm just going to block in some colours. So you can see this light colour, and I've talked to you about not worrying too much about everything being dark. Of course there's some lighter things, but then you can add these, these colours in later. See how I'm just sort of adding some of these details over the top? And this is what I mean by layering, okay? Layering different colours over the top of each other. The dry brush is not a problem at this stage because you... you see how that works nicely over the top? We're gradually getting this pattern here. But in regards to this background colour, just slap on one simple colour, doesn't matter if it's a bit darker than the colour that you see there. Might just make a little bit more yellowy here, okay, because it seems to be a bit more yellowy there. I'm getting a little bit more painterly now for these other colours that I'm overlaying. I can see that there's some whitey bits there, so I'll just add a bit more colours with some whiter bits. back with some more white colour. Let's wear these white a bit. And I'll continue to work on that and get some more details in there. So you can see what's happening. Yes, of course we've got our darks in there, but we're going to overlay with paint in the end. Now I can see that there's more white there on the edge, so come in. So this is starting to make sense to you now. This is why we did the dark in there before, because we're going to overlap with other colours and it's going to work really well. Now where these other paint strokes are here, I'm going to come back in later when that's all dry. So that is our workshop for today. Thank you to those boys that attended. That's terrific. Um, I think we get a lot out of these workshops because I can go around and I can do one-on-one -on -one support and um, individual help and I've got to say that what I've seen so far of your work very very impressed so keep up that hard work and we'll continue to develop our painting see you next time